Hey, hello everyone. Welcome to this video where I'll be breaking down how I created this Arctic scene in Blender 3D. First off, let me show you how I started building the scene. The goal was to create structures that look like icebergs and glaciers. To achieve that, I used ANT Landscape Add-on, which, if you're not familiar with, is already built into Blender, so you just need to activate it. To do this, go to Edit, Preferences, and then head over to the Add-ons section. In the search bar, type ANT and simply enable it and save preferences. Now, once the add-on was active, I selected the Mesa preset, which gave me a decent base to work with but I tweaked the parameters to better match the icy look I wanted. For instance, I adjusted the height and width to give the formations a more towering appearance, like real glaciers. I played around with the settings until I found a configuration that felt balanced and realistic. Then I carefully positioned these structures in the scene to create a visually appealing composition, ensuring everything worked well from the camera's perspective. Next up, the water. This part might seem simple, but Achieving realistic water is crucial in anything involving icebergs. I started by creating a flat plane which served as the water surface. Then I went into the shader editor. First I changed the color to black which helps to simulate the depth and coldness of the arctic waters. To give it a more realistic surface I reduced the roughness to zero and changed the IOR to 1.333. This is the value for water in real life. To add waves and ripples I used a noise texture connected to the bump node's height input. This gave the water some subtle surface detail. However, large bodies of water often have slight vibrations in the reflection, so I added another noise texture and connected it to the roughness to simulate that effect. This helped to break up the reflections, making them look more natural, especially when you're dealing with large and even surfaces like oceans or seas. For the water animation, I switched the noise texture from 3D to 4D, which gave me access to the W value. This is crucial for animating the noise over time. By using the driver hashtag frame slash number, I created a slow and gentle animation that simulates the real flow of water. To enhance the effect, I also animated the mapping node, making the water move sideways in the x-axis as well as generating the waves. After setting up the water surface, I decided to add a principal volume shader to the scene. I give it a soft bluish tint with a density of 0.2 and adjusted the, anis the anisotropy to 0.7 to give the light scattering a more realistic feel. Lighting is another key component. And for this scene, I opted for an HDRI from polyhaven.com called Industrial Sunset Pure Sky. Using HDRI lighting is a great way to achieve realistic global illumination without having to manually place lights all over the scene. This particular HDRI not only gives you excellent ambient lighting, but also adds complex reflections to the surfaces with low roughness values, like the icy structures and the water. To make the scene more engaging, I decided to introduce giant ice peaks. These were also created using the ANT landscape add-on. But this time, I used the Mountain 1 preset. I changed the displacement settings to increase the height and maximum values to 3, making the peaks taller and sharper. I increased the subdivisions level to 1024 in both X and Y directions for higher resolution. In the noise settings, I chose the shattered terrain type, which gave the peaks a rugged, fractured look. With proportional editing, I grabbed the tips of the peaks and rotated them slightly to add more asymmetry, making the scene feel more dynamic. I duplicated and rotated these peaks multiple times, creating a composition that draws the viewer's eye towards the center of the scene. For the smaller ice blocks floating in the water, I used the cube, subdivided it several times, and then applied the cell fracture add-on to break it into multiple fragments. From there, I selected the fragments I liked the most, and using sculpt mode, I shaped them into more defined ice blocks, making sure that they all look unique. Next, I created a plane and scaled it to cover the entire water surface visible from the camera. Using geometry nodes, I set up a system to distribute the ice blocks across the plane, scaling and rotating them randomly to create a natural scattering effect. This gave the water a more believable, dynamic feel, as if chunks of ice were drifting away from the glaciers. 
If you're interested in detailed tutorials on how I sculpt and distributed the ice blocks using geometry nodes, be sure to check out my Patreon, where you'll find step-by-step -step tutorials, assets, material packs, time lapses, and much more. Plus, by joining, you'll be supporting me to keep creating content. Thank you so much. To complete the scene, I added an explorer ship model, which I downloaded from Polyhaven. After positioning it in the scene, I gave it a simple forward motion animation. However, this looked a bit too stiff, so I decided to animate the sails to react naturally to the movement of the ship. To achieve this, I applied a clutch simulation to the sails and assigned the corner of each sail to a vertex group. Inside the cloth simulation settings, I used this vertex group as a pin group, meaning that these vertices would stay fixed in place while the rest of the sail responded to the wind simulation. To further enhance the realism, I added the force field in wind mode and parented into the rear of the ship, simulating forward wind. This made the sails below and react more naturally to the ship's movement. The full breakdown of the cloth simulation process is available on my Patreon, where I explain every step in detailed videos and tutorials. Please, check it out, you'll love it. For the ship texture, I made adjustments to give it a frosty, snow-covered appearance, especially on the upper parts. To achieve this, I created a node group that mixes the C-axis of the object's normals with a noise texture. This group was then used as a factor for blending between the ship's base texture and the snow texture, giving the ship a more weather icy look. Finally, to make the scene more dynamic, I animated the camera to move forward, closing into the ship. To make the camera movement feel more organic, I used Ian Hubert's camera Shakeify add-on, which creates a handheld camera effect. You can easily download this add-on from GitHub by searching for camera Shakeify and then install it by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and selecting the zip file. You will also have the link in the description of this video. In the final render, I enabled the denoise and mist passes, and then in the compositor, I added a denoise node, a glare node to enhance the lighting, and a lens distortion node with a subtle chromatic aberration value of 0.01 to simulate the imperfections of a real camera lens. In After Effects, I added an adjustment layer where, where I applied curves, noise, and a deep glow effect to enhance the lighting further. On another layer, I applied a final color correction with Lumetri to fine tune the overall tone of the scene. To create the atmospheric depth effect with the fog in the background, I used the mist pass as an alpha mask and distributed the fog at different distances. And after more than two days of hard work, here is the final render. Thank you so much for all the support on my previous video. I never imagined it could get so much attention. I also want to give a huge shout out to my very first paying patron member, Mohamed Ahmed Ibrahim. Thank you, Mohamed. If you want access to all my exclusive content and a shout out at the end of every video, head over to my Patreon and become a member. Thanks again, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.